Hey guys, it's Daggett. Welcome back to a brand new video. Welcome back to the table. And uh, we're doing another easy to draw Japanese flash idea video because you guys seem to really enjoy it. So we're going to do three more easy to draw Japanese flash designs. Now before I get into today's video, if you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on new videos. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up at the end if you did enjoy it. Something that you may notice is the sound of my voice. It's a bit raspy and a little bit stuffy. I do apologize for that. I am actually battling a pretty severe flu at the moment, uh, but I wanted to make sure you guys know that you are loved and appreciated here on my channel. So I thought I'd show you guys that by ensuring that I don't miss you guys out on this week's tutorial. Anyways, let's get straight into it. Okay, so we're sketching on the iPad Pro using the Apple Pencil and the Procreate app. And I'm gonna be sketching in red. I like sketching in red, it's just clearer for me somehow. So uh, first up, we're gonna be drawing. We're gonna be drawing a crane. I'm gonna start by drawing an oval shape like this. And you wanna keep these sketch lines a little bit lighter than your uh, final illustration. Now you're gonna curve over the top of that to create a center line. And then I'm gonna curve around under and up and then put a little oval at the end of that for the head. And straight from the front of that, you can just come out and back in for your beak. These are just sort of the construction lines that are gonna help us build up our character here. Now from here, I'm gonna put in some lines for our wings. I'm gonna curve out from the left, come down and come back in. I should point out by the way, this is another easy to draw uh, Japanese tattoo flash video. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that. Coming out from the other side, I'm gonna make this one slightly more closed. So just coming in and in again. So you've got these sort of two sections to the wing. Coming to the back of the body here, I'm gonna put in these leaf shapes, overlapping and coming around to the side and just getting a little bit smaller uh, as they come around the side. So cranes generally have those like really short tails. Uh, now for the back legs here, essentially going to come out and around with a curved line. And then I'm just going to split that off into three for the time being. And I'll come out here as well and just split that off into three. So when they fly, Crane's legs sort of just hang behind them. And it looks really funny. It looks, you know, really strange. But that's generally how they look. Uh, now from here, I'm going to connect up the head to the body, you know, just adding some thickness to the neck. So I might come down from the head, come through here, and then join into the body. And then from the other side, I will do pretty much the same thing, coming out from the body, starting a bit wider, and then sort of tapering down. So this section is going to be a lot thicker than the section that connects to the head there. Now, just coming in to do the face here, I'm going to add in this little curve, come out for the tip of the beak, then we can start at the back here, do a line out for this section of the beak. And we'll come down and forward and you can add a little nostril there. Now at this point, I'm just capping the top of the head, just adding a little line to the top of the head and you can add an eye in pretty much in line with your beak here. Now there's lots of different styles to do it. I'm going to add a pretty basic oval shape with an iris and a pupil. And you could, you know, double up on your on your almond shape there if you'd like to, just to sort of add another element of detail to it. Now I'm going to come around to the back of the head here, do a few flicking lines, and then join up to the bottom of the beak. Okay, now looking at each of the wings, essentially what you're going to do is create these little curves that create the front portion of the wing there, and they can sort of get wider as they attach to the body. Now inside of this, I might just draw a little curve as to where this is going to end. And I'm pretty much going to draw a fish scale pattern, but they don't have to be perfect because they're feathers, so they can overlap in all sorts of funny ways. Um, generally, I do them fairly neat anyways, but they don't have to be super tidy or like fish scales. They don't need to be super accurate. Now you can add a second curve over here. Come up, back down. Then pretty much add a whole bunch of uh, little loops off of this to create the first layer of feathers there as you come back towards the body and then for this second layer you can come up maybe add a bit of a peak to this one come back a peak to the second one and then just the same process pretty much all the way down to there uh, to that halfway point that's going to give you the wing 
And you're going to repeat that on the other side, basically. Now, for the feathers on the body, you can get super detailed or you can keep it really simple. In this case, we're doing an easy design. I'll keep it simple and just do a few of these little fish scale feathers uh, sort of coming off each other. And that's going to give you just a simple uh, sort of scattered feather pattern on the body. And coming around to the back here, might add some little flicking lines around here just to show where the feathers join back in. And now you can make these tail feathers a little bit more solid, like so. And then I just like to add this little line in the center of them, which is like that center vein of the feather there. Now for the feet, I'm keeping this one fairly simple as well. Pretty much going to follow my line out and create an, a claw or a nail, create a bump, another bump, and a third bump like so, come out for the next one, add a claw, bump, bump, a couple of bumps, straight out, add your nail in, add your bumps, like this, and pretty much all the way back on the leg there. Uh, you can do like a smoother version on the leg, which is fine as well. And then you pretty much want to do these little lines all up the leg and up the back of each of the toes. That's a little detail that's really going to sell this as a crane foot or a bird foot of some sort. And you're going to do the same thing for the other foot. Now that is essentially your crane design. Now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and add some cherry blossoms. Quickly show you how to do that, just to make this more of a complete design. You get a circle with a smaller circle on the inside. And now on the outside of this, I'm just going to equally space these petals that have like a V cut out in the middle. Okay, you could draw them as little ovals first if you wanted to like uh, like so, outline the outside, add a V and then come back, All right? But uh, with a bit of practice, they're fairly easy to just drop in. You don't really need to draw the ovals. And then uh, in between each of the petals, you can put this little V shape or little triangle shape for the leaves and dots coming around. That's a really simple and easy way to draw cherry blossoms. And you can go ahead and add some scattered petals around this, which is also very, very common with uh, Japanese designs. Now, once you've done a few cherry blossoms, the last thing you can do, if you would like, is to go ahead and add in some clouds. And in this case, again, I'm just keeping it simple and doing these little C shapes or semicircles. And these are like a really, really simple uh, way of doing Japanese style clouds. Okay, that is it for the crane design. Let's get on to the next one. So for the next design, I thought I would do a Japanese fan. This is actually one that was requested to me, so I figured, you know, why not include it in one of the videos. You're essentially going to draw a really open V shape, like so. And you can make this as open or as closed as you'd like. And then connect the top of this with a semicircle. Like so. Okay. Now from here, on the left hand side, I'm going to create the handle of our fan, which is pretty much going to be... A doubled up rectangle that sort of tapers down almost to a point towards the end there and yeah these lines should be straight if you were drawing this on paper you could use a ruler uh, on the iPad you can drag the line down and it will auto straighten if you hold in that position so that's a little nifty little trick for you uh, other than this I'm gonna split it now down the center with a straight line and then I'm gonna split that into two on each side so into quarters and then I'll go in between those quarters as well, splitting this into a total of eight, uh, eight lines there. Now, essentially what I'm going to do is come down to my line, uh, come back up to the next line, come back down to this line, back up to the next line, repeating this pattern all the way along till we get to the end of the fan. And then you can connect that back up. In this case, I think I want to do one more little segment, so I might just open that up and then drop this down. That way we've got that uh, additional little segment there. And now it's pretty much the basis of your fan. Uh, the other little thing you can do is add in this little fan shape underneath it. This is the sort of opposite end of the fan, I guess you could call it. And that's pretty much going to have just a mini fan shape. So I don't know what you call these. But like little overlapping sort of rectangle shapes coming around uh, like so and that's going to give you sort of the bottom section of the fan now to decorate this one there's lots of things you can do we're going to start off by doubling up on our top line 
create a bit of a decorative border here. And again, you can be really neat and precise using a ruler or using that hold feature like so. Uh, but I'm sort of just sketching this in for the time being. And then at the bottom of the fan, I might draw a semicircle coming around. Pretty much following the curvature of the initial uh, fan that we've got there. And I might draw another line in above this. And then do a little bump basically joining each of these sections. This is going to create like a bit of a decorative pattern towards the bottom of the fan. And double up on this line and do dots in the top of here. Pretty much however you'd like to decorate this fan. You can look at some traditional style fans and play around with different designs or come up with your own. Okay, now there's another little detail to add to this one and I've got a little trick for you. I'm just going to open up a new layer and I'm going to select yellow and I'm going to go to calligraphy and monoline. It's going to give me a stable line thickness that doesn't, doesn't change with the pressure of my um, Apple Pencil. And I'm pretty much going to bring that down and around, create a smaller circle like this and out and then on the other side might come down and around like so and these are going to be like the little tassels or the ropes at the bottom of the fan come back to my sketching layer now and you can pretty much trace the outside of your rope and your lines should be fairly consistent because you've used a monoline brush to do this and when you get to the end of your rope, just loop it around the end. Pretty much just round off the end. Put a little ring, like so. And then I like to do like a bell shape, like this. And then pretty much like a little cloud shape off the bottom of this. That's like a real uh, traditional knot or fraying end of the rope that they use in a lot of designs. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And then if you'd like, you can go ahead and add... Uh, whatever other details you'd like, whether you want to add flowers. Uh, so, you know, in this case, we could go ahead and add a couple of peonies. Might do this on a new layer so I can sort of cheat and just copy and paste uh, some of these, but it'll just give you an idea of how this will look. So I'll draw a little circle in. I might split that up into a few sections like this. And I'll start by just adding these little bumps along the top of each circle. Like so. And across the top. And then I can pretty much come out with the same sort of bumpy shape to create each of the petals. Really simple. When you're doing something this small, you really don't want to add detail to it because it's going to be very hard to draw, hard to color in, and very difficult to tattoo if that's your intention. And then you can go ahead and add in your leaves if you'd like to. Uh, just drawing three lines and creating a leaf shape. So that's pretty much it for the leaves. You can do singular leaves like this. Occasionally that works. And I might make this a little bit smaller just so I can squeeze another leaf in. Okay, it's going to be one, two, three. One, two, three little sections for the leaf. Maybe another singular leaf there and another singular leaf there. So that's going to give you a peony. Now, like I said, you can if you're drawing this on paper, you're going to have to put the work in or uh, get some tracing paper or something. In this case, I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to flip it just to give you guys a good look at what this uh, looks like once it's finished. Definitely encourage you guys to actually draw this and not copy and paste it like I just did. But I just want to give you guys a real quick look at this. Uh, like so. Anyways, you get the idea, so that's pretty much a Japanese-style fan. All right, last thing's last, guys. We are going to be drawing a Mon Mon cat. This is basically a cat with tattoos. I like these little cat characters. Tend to be tattoo artists. It's really kind of cool. Starting off with an oval. This is going to be for the backside of our cat. I'm going to come forward and up and add another circle. This is the chest or the rib cage area. And then I'm just going to pop a circle almost directly on top of it, maybe a little bit back towards the right. That's going to be for our head, and I think that's a bit too big. I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. You want the head to be so almost significantly smaller than the chest and the backside there. 
And then on the side of our back side, we'll add another oval. That's going to give us the sort of side of the leg. And now we can follow a, a center line, which is going to follow around the cat's head. Down onto its back and then around and out for the tail like so. Now starting off with our little head here, I'm going to add in a couple of rough triangle shapes just for our ears or the placement of our ears at least. And I'm going to come to the front here, basically at the bottom of the ear, come forward, out of the circle and then cut back down and towards the circle again. It's not going to come out very far either. It's going to give you the sort of mouth section that can pretty much come straight down into the chest and it's going to come out for a shoulder and straight down for the uh, front limbs which aren't actually visible in this design but that's sort of where they where they'll sit and they're pretty much coming straight back from this little uh, line that we just drew in i'm going to come back to about here pretty much just draw a little sideways v that's a little bit stylized that's going to be the eye just like a cute little eye a little triangle shape for the front of the nose and you can curl that back and then for the bridge of the nose here we'll come up and then around for the back of the head really really simple now for this section at the front here i'm just putting some dots laying in a few whiskers and then the bottom jaw can just come down into the neck like that keeping it nice and simple for the ears i'll come out i'll round the end off and come down then I'll pretty much come to the top and go like this. The other side will just be two rounded lines like so because you don't see the inside of the opposite ear there. Now we can follow the line around the back of the head down to the top of the shoulder here which is going to sort of cut out this way like so. Then the back of the this part of the back side here can pretty much curve around. It might take you a few tries to sort of be happy with the curvature there. You can come up from this uh, limb here, pretty much come up and back down. That's going to give you that limb. And then your tail is going to cover where the foot would actually be. So just bringing the tail out and around and then back. And that's where the foot would sort of sit is behind the tail there. And that's going to give you a really general cat shape, which is really nice. Now for the tattoo on the cat's back, we're actually going to be using one of my brushes. This is going to be from the Koi and Floral brush set, which is available at daggetdesigns.com.au. But I'm going to go ahead and take a Koi fish and I'll whack it on the page. Might flip it horizontally. And I'm going to put it on the back of my cat here, like so. And from here, I can just come in and erase the parts that don't fit into the body of the cat. And then I'll go back to my sketching brush and we can go ahead and add some waves, some finger waves. Just curl it from here and I'll come up and loop around. Now I've gone through finger waves before. They're essentially these little elongated C shapes, really simple to draw, just takes practice and repetition. And eventually you'll figure out a certain flow that works really well for you to drawing these finger waves. And once you figure that out, you're pretty much set. You'll be able to draw these uh, any way that you want them to look which is really nice. So just adding in finger waves. I like to add these little swooping sections underneath that connect into the waves themselves. Now a little word about Mon Mon cats themselves. You can pretty much tattoo whatever you'd like on them or you can you know, draw whatever tattoos you'd like on them. Generally speaking, they're gonna have Japanese style tattoos because it is a Japanese character. Uh, but you know, feel free to get creative and sort of do what you'd like with it. Whether you wanna keep it traditional or you wanna have your own spin on it, it's completely up to you. I'm not going to be judging you for any of those decisions. But yeah, you can certainly have a bit of a play with it. I like to stick to sort of traditional Japanese. Generally speaking, they're, they're not just got one tattoo. They've generally got little body suits. So they're kind of like little Yakuza cat gang members. It's really cool. So yeah, basically what I've done is used one of my stamp brushes uh, from the Koi and Floral brush set. And then I've gone ahead and drawn the background in to fit sort of the shape of the body. And that gives us a really nice looking Mon Mon cat. All right, lastly, a little bonus for you guys. Just want to show you how to draw the cat on a different angle in case you want the cat sort of looking over its shoulder. They've got really, really inter interesting ways of moving their heads, actually. So I'm drawing in a center line on a circle, essentially. 
with the center, uh, the eye plane, you know, a little bit higher up. Then you can come down just a little bit for the nose. And you can pop in your little triangles on either side for your ears. I might just drop in a bit for the chin or the, the neck there. And then you have your sort of shoulder area here. It'll come down the back like so. Okay. Now I'm basically going to draw in a little triangle on that line. And then on either side of this, you can add in your little V-shapes uh, for your eyes. And you can make them as big or as small as you'd like. I might make them uh, a little bit smaller. Just tends to look a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit nicer. A little bit smaller like this. Now I'm going to come out from either side and add in the little front bit of the mouth. Add some whiskers to either side. And then for the bottom jaw, I don't like to connect it, but just draw this little semicircle bit in. Your ears are pretty much going to be standard. Just double up on your line, like so. And then you can connect the top of the head across like so. Like so. And then you can come down. And I like to add this little sharp point to the side of the cheek there. And then come down. And then you can come out and down for the shoulder. And come on this side for the back of the head. And down for this shoulder here. So if you wanted to have the cat sort of looking over its shoulder, sort of spinning its head around, you could also go with this sort of design. I just thought I'd give you another little option there. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Once again, I apologize for my stuffy voice, but I really hope you got a lot out of this one. If you did, please leave me a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on new videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.